Hello. Hello, everybody. So welcome rather than back. doing a whole, yeah, welcome back. <laughs> rather than to doing a whole, um, rather than doing a whole long introduction here, um, this is this part is two part of the previous video where we are shitting on a fucking asshole. I don't know. Shitting on an asshole? What? <laughs> shitting on an asshole? That's kind of what they're for. Um, anyway, so, where we last left off, if you have, if you're not watching these back to back, um, Eric, the guy I was interested in, I guess you could say, we weren't technically together, but it was implied, and it was very clear, like, um, there was interest on both sides. Okay, there was a whole lot of shit going on, and there was a whole lot of fucking... Go, uh, mixed signals going on between the said person that we are fucking currently shitting on. My best friend was being played, to be perfectly honest. There was Satan's asshole, and she's a bitch and a fucking slut, and she couldn't fucking get her story straight. She constantly tells the lies all the fucking time. Then there was poor little Kenny who got his claws... Well, got his little asshole grabbed by Satan's toilet's claws. There was also Celery, Maple, and Ginger. And there's... Maple we're okay with. Ginger and Celery, they can go fucking die in a fire in a stew. Like, that I... Oh, can and... And they're kind of side characters. They're side characters, and they're not really, really important to this. They game. won't really pop up again in this part, I don't think. Um, Unless we forget. And somebody knows their names. Um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, but basically, where we left off, there was tensions between Ginger Celery, Satan's Toilet, and... And Maple. And Maple, and, and the both of us. The both of us, and then Kenny as well. Because and I had friend. become, and I had become friends with Kenny, and Kenny is a pretty awesome guy. Um, yeah, and to be perfectly frank, I had a problem with Kenny, because I'm because... one of those best friends that like you're my best friend. You don't need these people. Well, not only I that. I don't know how crazy that sounds. Not only that, but she was also kind of put off by Kenny because he was sucked in by Satan in... at toilet. Yes. Fuckery. Which. He didn't know that she was crazy until she kind of went crazy, and we, and we couldn't revealed tell him. We couldn't tell him because he was so fucking wrapped up in her fucking shittery, and her fucking claws were so dug in deep. Nothing he wouldn't have believed this. Said would be believed. He did eventually believe us. Well, when she finally fucking when she kind of showed her ass. But anyway, that's another story. So basically, that we aren't going to. Fast forward to about November-ish. Um, all these tensions are raising. Eric has come back from game being gone for like two weeks. Um, we without saying anything beforehand. Nine. Without saying anything beforehand and blaming it on a busy work schedule. And then through the holiday, we're still playing Warframe. Warframe. And I've and come back in with everybody. And we're three. hanging out. And I'm noticing that, that as I'm trying to probe for more information about Eric, because I wanted to know more, because I was head over fucking heels for him, mm -hmm. um, he was sort of giving me vague answers. Like, um, he was giving me very evasive answers, we'll say. But on the flip side, he was also very accepting. So, like, my parents would talk in the background when we were over voice, and he would say things to them and be, you know, polite. polite. And I was there for and, a few of these situations. And he commented, like, directly to them and was talking to them, and things were cool. And then... He was very respectful, like he was, a potential boyfriend should be. He didn't seem at all perturbed by the fact that I'm disabled, which is... An insecurity thing, because I don't like the idea of me ever being a burden on anyone. Um, but that's a whole nother fucking. I know, she hates it when I say that, but it's a it's a realistic fear that I have. Um, but anyway. Well, sometimes reality can. Suck. But that that's something. Also, side note: if you guys think that I've taken my clothes off, I haven't. I just had this little contraption slash uh, accessory arm thing that I made, um, and I'm just, I'm really uncomfortably hot, because, like I said, my boyfriend turned off the air conditioner for a while, so now the house has gotten hot, and this subject is 
pissing me off and I'm exerting a fuck ton of energy to keep myself calm. So now I just kind of, I'm, I'm still wearing a shirt, the shirt that I had on the entire time, but I took off the arm guards and now you can see my disgusting paleness. So, I need to throw some comedy in. So before Christmas, say around the time of Thanksgiving, we'll say. Sounds uh, about right. My family doesn't really go anywhere for Thanksgiving anymore. So we were kind of hanging around the house, and I was online. I was because, so happy because I had my bestie. So basically, he, I had been planning an idea for a Christmas present. For I her. remember this one because I fucking helped. And I'll get into this here in just a second. I'll, I'll get into this real quick. If I fucking take the time out of my fucking warped ass weird little life to help my bestest best friend, the most cherished non blood relation in my life, to set up something that is frankly one of the most romantic fucking things I have ever seen, and I take time and I actually, you know, give a shit, and you go and fuck this up. So, basically, I'd had this plan going, but he beat me to the punch, kind of, because we were talking about Elder Scrolls Online, because the Christmas sale was about to start on Steam. Mm -hmm. um, and him and I were just talking about it, and then, lo and behold, he buys me a copy mm -hmm. of the Elder Scrolls Online, shortly after it went free to play. And... Well. Pay once and play. Well, y yeah, you don't have to have a subscription anymore. This is more acceptable. So basically, this is super fucking cold, and it feels fucking phenomenal. I'm gonna reiterate in this video because I said it in the last video, but I'm gonna re reiterate it here. I never asked for anything never. that he bought for me. Not the Warframe content that he bought for me. Which I brought not... up in my my like Lone Star fucking violent bitch video. I never asked for ESO, and... He showed interest. He showed interest, and he Eric genuinely... chose to spend real-life money on my best friend. And it wasn't just me that he was spending money on, although it was pretty fucking romantic that he was buying me gifts. Because don't get me wrong, a bitch loves gifts. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to ask for it. Because my thing is, but you don't know... we are respectful. We are classy. We don't ask. We but we well, I didn't even hear. Oh, I know, I know. Yes. I was just being funny. You know, m my thing is that he didn't know me anything. We still weren't technically together. There still was no. There was no label to what you guys were. There was no official label, and that should have been a red flag. But it was pretty clear that he was interested. <gasps> exactly. How and is it going to be a red flag? How are we supposed to know it's a red flag, by the way, when it's so fucking clear that this person is interested in you and, and invested in you, but he did say that he wants to take me slow. And as another mixed signal, he would say, he would buy me things. And you don't buy something for someone that you're, you know, that you think is, you know, in, that you're infatuated with. Just for no reason. You don't buy things for people if you're not interested in them. Unless, you know, you're just a genuinely nice person. But even then, there's an expectation there. And I'll explain why further on. So, shortly after he bought me ESO, I was like, oh, that's nice. He didn't have to do that. You know, that's a pretty awesome gift. And then he proceeded to say, well, I wanted to get married to you in the game. Well, and he didn't say that explicitly. What happened was, he snuck it in like a smooth fucking criminal. He said... I saw the transcripts of the conversation, and I did just, like, super paraphrase it. But I mean fucking really. Okay, if you know anything about the Elder Scrolls series, which I played Skyrim and Oblivion, um, the Skyrim. Amulet Amara is oh. something that you use to marry other characters in the Elder Scrolls game. Side note, where the fuck do you get that? It's lore in one of the towns. Oh, okay. Somewhere. Um, there's a temple and everything. Mm. Um, 
but basically in ESO, they have a situation set up kind of like WoW's Referral Friend program, mm -hmm. only you can... Oh, it's marriage. And it's marriage. And mm -hmm. he said at first, hey, if you join this with me, we'll both get this ring and this amulet, and if we wear them, we'll get extra experience points. He specifically also said, don't do this with anybody but me. Yes. If that's because, not laying fucking claim, then I don't know and, what is. And he wanted us to play together, which I was totally fucking cool with. Just the two of them. Well, we had other friends that played, but he wanted to teach me how to play. And I was totally okay with that. We had other friends who played, and well, those people barely played. Right. And he was back into it again and was eager to teach me how to play. And we spent days talking about, like, what character I should build, which I wanted to build a magic character, and he helped me figure out, like, the best way to build the character and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was pretty clear <laughs> that he wanted me to do this thing. And when I realized that it was an amulet of Mara that he wanted to give me in-game, I was like, holy shit, he wants to marry me. And I mentioned and he Messages me. This is a bit of comedy in this shit show of fucking drama. He messages me and says, Bestie, what do you know about Elder Scrolls? What do you know about Skyrim? There's hot people you can marry and there's a whole lot of shit you can kill. Snappy, sassy, come back. I mean, what do, we, what do you expect from mm -hmm. me? And that was about it. And he, I was, uh, you know, I was like, what? What's up? He tells me, the whole thing. The whole thing. <laughs> I, I read the transcripts. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I, like, I didn't know what the amulet of Amara was. I hadn't gotten to the explanation point. I got to an exchange of fucking rings between the two characters. And, and I stopped. And I whipped my fucking head towards my second monitor, even though my camera's right fucking here. And I said... Phoenix, he just fucking proposed to you. Yes, it's in a fucking video game, but he just fucking proposed to you. And, okay, here's the thing. I know it was in a video game. We know, we know. We and... Know, and we did that. We, we had a... We're allowed to, okay? And there's plenty of people who do it just for the experience. But there's also... There's a lot an of... An obvious implication there. Exactly, there's also a lot of extenuating circumstances throughout every fucking thing else that was going down at the particular time where we had a little bit of a fucking spaz attack of giggly, girly, messy, oh my god, my bestie just got proposed to by a dude. And then shortly after this happened, literally like the next day or the next weekend, he disappears again for almost two weeks again. No, it was the entirety of December that he was gone, and there was up no until the oh, day before Christmas. And then he was leaving again on Christmas mm -hmm. to go up to a college to for orientation. See, but then didn't he say that he didn't go to that orientation because his dad died during Christmas? Wait, we had we haven't gotten there for yet. Oh, okay. So. Sorry, I'm in the time he was gone, I remember the larger thing. He told me that he was going to. This time, he didn't tell me he was going to be gone, but I had kind of picked up a few things because I had been reading. Yes, I was reading the news in his area. But I had been reading the news in his area <laughs> because he was in law enforcement. And that's something that, that's frankly, reasonable, worry, that worries in my opinion. me. He um, was concerned. I was concerned about the guy that I wanted to be my boyfriend. Um, but... But even if he didn't want him to be his boyfriend, he would be concerned enough to check up on things like that. Right. In a friendly manner. And so... And like I said, like we said before, this was also still around the time where Phoenix was trying to resist letting himself love this man. Yeah. And then... In the time he was gone, that second time, 
I sort of stopped resisting. And I fucking fell for it. I think you were. And I could you started. Not? Well, and that's the thing. How could His I not? This game was thick and smooth and creamy, like a really good. And even fight. if it hadn't been as smooth as it was, there was that magnetic fucking pull. He was charming. He was a gentleman, and he was. He had all the right fucking things, and honestly, we should have known. And frankly, wow. I started working on a Christmas gift. Now. He told me that he didn't really celebrate Christmas, but... Ah! This was around the time that I've managed to finagle his motherfucking Steam info. Yes. I was a but, bitch on a mission! But, my thought was this. My thought was, he doesn't celebrate Christmas, but this is a gift. He's That's given me gifts. Hard. He's given me gifts. This is a gift from the heart. And maybe this will take things to the next level. Because by this time, we had known each other for three months. Yeah. And my thing was, okay, there's it's slow, slow and then there's non-existent. Yeah. And but I need to know. Wasn't, but he couldn't, logically, Phoenix couldn't say it was non-existent because Eric was still getting off these vibes. Also, I'd right. like to state that there's a huge difference between this video the video beforehand and my video, my first video, because shit went down yesterday. Now, and and we'll we'll, we'll get, get to that. Yeah. But I've had time to calm down. I've had time to you know organize things. I'm still a fucking spaz. And I wanted to clear the air and tell the whole story mm. because yeah, emotions <laughs> ran high, and I wanted people to get the unabbreviated truth. Of what was going on. Not just me defending my best friend to the very fucking end. Have a good day. Fuck you. There's that's not getting that's not getting explained. <laughs> okay, so basically, a roommate had to go to work. That's yeah. as far as it goes. So, I just wanted to clear the air with this. But back to the story, he's gone for up until the day before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now, in this time, I hatch Operation Present for Eric. And in this which, time, I was also still occasionally getting messages from him asking about Phoenix. Asking about how he's doing, asking about how he's feeling. Does he because feel like him? Does because there was periods of time where we were missing each other. Because his schedule would have him on at like 11 in the morning. And I wasn't getting up because I was still working. I wasn't getting up until like 2. And me, I'm a, I'm an insomniac. And if I sleep, I sleep. If I don't, I don't. So and I this... was catching both of them at different times. Sometimes within seconds of each other. Which was really fucking frustrating. Let me fucking tell you. It was a goddamn romantic comedy for a while. And this was before the loss of my last job, which, so I was still, like, really heavily deal. saving up money and buying, and, like, doing articles to make money. And so... He's a video game journalist, by the way, and a very fucking epic one. Yes. Um, well, I, I was. If I, I was, if I could go on a fucking new website to work for. Mm -hmm. They would actually pay me. But anyway, I digress. Um... So my plan for a gift for him was something from the heart and something oh. homemade. Old school. Not something from the Steam sale because he told me that he didn't really play a whole lot on Steam other than Warframe. Which, from what I could tell, was true. Even though I worked my ass off to get that son of a bitch's motherfucking Steam info. So, what ends up happening is I made a playlist first. And what I did was using YouTube, so I took fucking cute. various songs that made me think of Eric or various songs I really liked um, at the time, which was heavily influenced by my state of mind, which was a fucking fool in love. It was um, so cute, though. He made and him I, a mixtape. 
and I basically built him a YouTube mixtape. And it was music videos and a whole bunch of long things. I help! And he even helped me organize the songs to where it wasn't, like, all disjointed and shit. Um, and then, on top of that... I was proud of my bestie. Like, I was proud, and I was, I was supportive, and I wanted this to work. You don't, I know this sounds selfish, and it sounds like I'm fucking taking over and making this about me, but I'm really not. I was so fucking ready for my bestie to be happy. Because, and this is going to sound very sad, <laughs> all I've ever really wanted was to Can have, just, was to have somebody just for me. Yeah, like, and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's all really anyone ever And he's wrote. never, Phoenix has never been stupid about it. He's never been dumb about it. Well, when I was much younger, I was, but I paid for that's that. That's much younger, though. I paid for that mistake. Um, but basically... Basically, he has done nothing to deserve the fucking bullshit that Aaron has pulled. So, I made the playlist. But to go with the playlist, with Glitchy's help, I, I recorded that. a video. Much like and the it, way we're doing it right now. And much like the way we're doing it right now, only it was just me on camera. Side note, my beloved is bringing me donuts. <laughs> yes. And basically, fat, what the video be... was... <laughs> the video was basically emotional vomit. It was like, so fucking wonderful, you guys. You don't understand. It was beautiful. It was fucking and so romantic. And if so anybody beautiful. wants to see that video, it's still up on YouTube. It's just hidden. Um, it is. And I can link it to you guys if you want to see it. But basically, it was just me pouring out my feelings and saying that I really enjoyed getting to know him over the past few months and that I really I was, also was into him. During this time, I was, like, giving him a few pointers here and there. Like, quietly. And so, like, I I'm just... I'm sorry, I'm literally just so fucking proud of the work you did in that. And, like, how fucking much you put yourself into that. And you put yourself out there and at risk. And I'm also really proud of the fact that I was actually useful to you. And sure, I can't help it. I... I'll make the weird things again. Um, but this is also a, a point in time to make another thing known. Because it may end up coming out for some reason, but in the time he was gone, I would send him messages. It wasn't every day. It was like once a week. And, and it was, you know, hey, I hope you're doing okay. I miss you. You know, I miss talking to you. Um, I hope everything's going okay. And I would send those about once a week. And it was just to make sure that if he hopped on for a minute, he knew that I hadn't forgot about him, and he knew that I cared. It was just a thing that I felt I needed to do. And so then I made the playlist and the thing. Okay, real quick. In regards to... Sorry, I got distracted because, like, my baby was messaging me a bit and making sure that I was... Well, he was he was being respectful and asking if we were making videos still, which kudos to my boyfriend. Yay. Um, in this, in this whole thing of him messaging Eric every now and again to check on him, he does the same thing to me. If yes. I go yeah. and fucking vanish, because sometimes I ha I can't handle life, and I can't handle being around people, and I don't want to destroy what my best friend and I have, I will remove myself from everybody so that I don't do something stupid. My best friend, Phoenix, will message me. And say, hey, you can't get rid of me that easy. Hey, I want to make sure you're okay. Hey, sweetie, is everything okay? And, and the last that will help me. And the last thing I want anybody to think is that if we haven't talked for a while, it's that I'm mad at you. Because if I'm mad at you, you'll know. And, and that's one could... of the quickest ways that he will get me to talk to him. Are you mad at me? Have I done something wrong? No! And there have been a couple of times where I've genuinely wondered. <laughs> because but, I've abruptly just completely cut shit off. And that's not... Right. It's never been his fault. It has and, been everything going on in my life. It has been shit with my mother. It has been shit with other things. It has been shit with celery, maple, and ginger. It has been shit with... Why do I keep doing this every time I do that? Like I don't know. 
Now, you could probably construe me messaging him as once a week or so or as being fuck. clingy, but, and, and I'll, I'll admit, I have abandonment issues. I do. But, but at this point, like, you were I was right really, and you told him. And I was trying to be, like, the not crazy, like, significant other. <laughs> he was other. trying to keep his freak flag at half mast. We were going on voice, Glitchy and I, and I was just like pining, like, vomiting, emotionally vomiting all over the her. The word vomit like, was real, and it was so <laughs> cute. It was the cutest fucking thing. Let me and, tell you. And like, so I was genuinely trying here. And the date on Christmas Eve, he hopped on, and I gave him because. Was this, was this I, the, was this the time that he hopped on and I lost my ever-loving motherfucking mind and managed to get you guys to actually be able to talk to each other? No. No? Was that a different time? Yeah. yeah okay. But what happened was... That was... I, that freak-out fest that I mentioned just now was before the very final last time he ever contacted us. Right. And I knew he wasn't going to be... I knew he wasn't going to be on line on Christmas Day. Not because he was celebrating or anything, but because he was going to be um... With family or some kind. He was going to be going to a college for orientation. Oh. See, that's but, where I didn't realize, because I got... What I was told by him, now that I think about it, was that he was going to be staying with family. And see, he told me that he was moving, he was taking all of his things, moving out, going up to this school to make sure that he could go that following semester, and then he was moving into a new place. And so my thing was, okay, he's not going to be on on Christmas. I better give this to him now. So I did. And I was so busy being the geeky, supporting best friend that... Neither of us talked about where he actually was going to be. And I should have realized that the schools should have been long closed yeah. by Christmas, and I didn't. And had I actually known that that's what he, Eric, had told Phoenix, I would have fucking called it out. Now, there's a little more to the story before he cuts off all contact. But basically... I don't see him on Christmas. I don't see him the week after. I don't really see him New Year's except for like a couple of minutes. And then in January, he messages me and says that he's sorry that he was gone so long. Messages but, me too. But he has bad news. That his dad had passed away and then he had to move in with his mother because and was mama working. Was cuckoo. And couldn't really take care of herself. And she was um, possibly suicidal. I got and, that story as well. And, but I also got a lot more information because he knew that if he told Phoenix, this guy knew us, like knew how to deal with us. And see, I would get more information because he knew that Phoenix couldn't handle it or that he would be too worried. He knew I was a worrier, which I am. I'm totally a worrier. I love you can ask my you. best friend. I love you can it. ask my best friend. I'm a warrior, worrier about Please. everything and everyone. Like, Please fucking. don't ever change. Worry about me because you're like literally one of the only people in this fucking world that I can give a shit about me. And so, like, I need you. he also told me that he was going to be working two jobs and that he was having to put his medical schooling on hold because he was trying to take care of his mom's bills and, and the funeral. Take care of her and the like, funeral arrangements and, and all, all the, the other shit. like insurance, life insurance arrangements and all that kind of shit. Which I totally understood. Of course we understood. How could we not? And then he tells me also that he loved the playlist and the video. And that he appreciated, he was grateful, and it touched him. And to me, privately, I swear I feel so fucking violated for the shit he did. He told me that he, he didn't want me to tell... Phoenix, by the way, he didn't want me to tell him because he didn't want to be, because 
he was embarrassed. I feel like the more and more we talk about this, the more and more I realize we got played, bitch. He told me, Eric told me, that he thought Phoenix was adorable and cute and sweet and he loved it. And I wasn't allowed to tell Phoenix, but I told him anyways. Because and he also told me that it was going to be a while before he could really be online steady again. A while for in a six motherfucking month. Because he was going to be working these two jobs and taking care of and things. And he couldn't afford cable and he couldn't afford internet and a few other things. And he told me, he, I said, are you sure, you know, that you're going to be able to come back and be around? And he assured me, promised hey. me, promised me that we would see him again and that there would be, you know, more contact and that when he got back, we would play ESO together and, and all, all this other shit, which honestly, again, alarm bells are ringing, Willie. Okay, so he disappears again. The first month, I don't think anything of it. The second month, shit hits the fan with... Yes. Satan's toilet and the uh, and uh Kenny and celery and ginger? ginger yes and maple I couldn't I wanted to call him Griffin and I was like wait what hey <laughs> maple like I like we've said already maple wasn't so much a problem for us no and we found out later that there was issues in the core group that mm -hmm. contributed to the problems that we had but um we have come up with nicknames, my love. My darling is home, by the way. He has donuts. I'm not going to eat on, on video. So basically, what ends up happening is that whole situation implodes. We keep Kenny as a friend, and we kind of ditch the rest, except for Maple. We still talk to Maple a little bit. Mostly I talked to Maple, and I was featured yeah. in a, more than a few of his streams. And I, we had because no for problem. For some fucking reason, the guy thought I was amusing. I don't know. Now... After that, I got another message from Eric that was just saying, you know, hey, everything's good. I'm still, you know, trying to keep things going here. This is about three months in. And I got messages occasionally from Eric as well. Hey, I just want to let you know everything's okay. I didn't get a chance to message Alex or Phoenix. And, you know, he, and he would check up on Phoenix through me. And across that period of time, basic truth, you know. across those first three months, I'm still sending him messages once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Yeah. At I slowed most, down a little. Twice a week. At the but most. Then, that wasn't even often. Yeah. It was more like I would message him, and then I would see something that was really cool or really interesting, and, and I would link it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Which and I do that with everything. Does that to me too, like a lot. I love it. I love it. And we do it so, together. There's times where I literally will blow up his fucking Skype so much that when he gets online, he'll literally send me a message. Holy fucking links, Batman. But then, after the third month mark, the last time he spoke to us and said, you know, everything's fine, the messages stopped. The fourth month hits. And I notice that he's been on Steam. Yes. He notices, she notices he's been on Steam. Me. And then I start noticing that he's been on Steam. And I've also, I also notice, because oh, I love... Actually, him. in that three-month span, I never told you this because I didn't want to fucking start drama. I was trying to be responsible. There was a period of time where, during that three months that he was supposed to be so fucking busy and taking care of his mom, he was on Steam multiple times. He was on Curse multiple times. He was on other platforms multiple times, and I would see him. I wouldn't talk to him or anything. I would just see such and such has been on in the last two hours. Such and such has been on in the last five minutes. There would always be occasions where if I would log into these services, he was always either gone way before or just before. And basically, um, we started seeing him on Steam, like after the fact. And we and saw him then, on Warframe. And then 
I would log into Warframe, and there was actually a time, and I don't think he noticed, but I logged on to Warframe to play for a little bit because I was bored. And work was stressing me out because shit had hit the fan, and I was losing work. And then I hopped on a war. I, I worked. I hopped on the Warframe just to kill shit, and he was online. Yeah. And he didn't say anything to me, and I didn't say anything to him, because I thought, well, maybe he's just idling his account. Like maybe he logged in to get his daily bonus thing or whatever. And just left it on because he got called away. You know, I was naive. One, one thing I you guys naive. need to take away from this is during this entire period of time, and yes, the lighting did just change my boyfriend's in the kitchen. During this period of time, Phoenix did not belittle or degrade or talk any kind of negative thing about Eric. No. I, I was I was a very torn person because I knew that if he was telling the truth, then he had a lot on his plate. And maybe those minutes where he was in Warframe were just a few minutes of solace away from everything hitting the fan. Phoenix even made the excuse, oh, maybe he just, you know, maybe the game just logged him in. It got to a point where he was standing up for this man so fucking much that I freaked the fuck out. And... Because I couldn't handle what my bestie was doing to himself anymore. And in return, I freaked out on her. Because I kind of expressed to her mm -hmm. the situation that I was in. Because I was in a situation where he had been nothing but a gentleman. He had been nothing but what seemed to be a stand-up guy. Yeah. And I didn't have reason to not believe him. Because... He doesn't have much experience in the dating world. Right. Whereas I, and I know this sounds like conceited and da 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 whatever, I have dealt with people like this. Where everything seems fine, everything seems amazing, everything seems good. But they're f secretly fucking their, like, third cousin twice removed in a fucking room club. Not really. Well, funny. and I had tried to check up on him through Twitter and through there Facebook. was a point where we literally got a little bit fucking crazy. We tried we to did. stalk the fuck out of him. And it was because I fucking... What can I say? Uh, I was there was really a moment of insanity. I was really into this guy, and I just wanted answers. I, I wanted answers. Because I thought that... I, I, I There was a period of time where we thought he was dead. He could have been. He there were shootings in his area, and you know my whole thing. Oh my thing god! Was, wasn't that around the time at that when the one fucking Batman movie came out and that guy did all that crazy shit? Yeah. And my thing was, I wasn't entitled to an explanation, but I, I, I fucking like in in all this time we were never technically labeled as official, but he had made his intentions beyond clear and the mixed signals were and there and I clear to me. and I didn't understand what was going on and I thought that at first I thought that maybe um, he had just been busy and then as time went on for a long time I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be wrong and cause a rift between my best friend and I and there went a time where the messages that were once a week slowly started being twice a week, and uh, not twice a week. Uh, once every two weeks. Once every two weeks, and then once every three weeks, and then once a month. And after that, I just would message him once a month. And then it stopped even being that, because I wasn't getting any kind of feedback. And I got to the point where I knew that... This wasn't healthy for me because I was so wound up in this that I just had to let it go. I just had to stop. <clears throat> and if he came back and had a good explanation, then I'd have to look at him pretty fucking hard and figure out what was going on. But I could not keep waiting around any longer. 
And so I just kind of put him out of my mind. And occasionally someone would mention it. I and tried I kinda, to not mention him at all. And I kind of brushed it off. And um, then we kept noticing that he was on Steam. And I kept noticing, I noticed that on Cursed Voice, some of his messages to me were missing. But not all. In other words, he deleted them. Except, Actually, except, except that you, can't. you can't do that on Chris. So how the fuck? No, I don't know how that happens because I can still see some messages from him. Before you get to that thought, viewers, no, I'm not obsessing over it. But um, I just was going to get receipts for some of this earlier, and found out that a lot of the messages are gone. Um, yeah. And then yesterday. But you and I are on call, and just out of the blue, I was looking for a conversation or something on Skype, and his profile picture and his name popped up, and I clicked on it, and it had, instead of the green bubble with the white outline, or the, the, the white bubble with the green outline that says you're offline, it was the gray bubble with the question mark, which meant he... In front of me on Skype. You didn't tell me about this during the call. No, I didn't. I'm tell fairly you certain because you knew I was going to freak the fuck out. Well, and my thought was, oh well, he must have unfriended me. Like, you know, I, I'm over it. Because <laughs> at first at I was. At that point? I, I was over it. you be? And then today, <clears throat> slash technically yesterday, it's seven oh one in the morning for me, which is six oh one in the morning for him. So yesterday now And the day before was when I saw the unfriendly right. person. And then yesterday we were sitting talking over chat, not voice. Yeah. And we were working on writing some stuff and then I saw because I still had the fucker on follow on Twitter that he had posted something. And he still had me on follow. He's literally still following me, even though I fucking like blocked him and shit. Like, that's creepy shit. I, I kind of, this is this not the vindictive person in me, but I kind of wish you hadn't blocked him until he saw this. I know, I know, but this could easily go back. Like, if he saw it, that it could easily go back to Celery, Ginger, and Satan's cut it. At this point. I'm I, I, at, at this point, I don't care. Bring it on. But I'm... Right. But you know, at the same time, I'm just like... Oh. When she noticed that he posted... I immediately told him. And I looked at it, and then I realized that he wasn't following me anymore. Which he had been when I followed him. And then... A lot of things started making sense. And I realized... And my rage began to choke me. And I realized that instead of him keeping his promise and saying that, you know, eventually he would talk to me again... And he, multiple times throughout the entire time that we were all talking and all being friends and whatnot, said that he would tell us if he ever had a problem with us. Liar! And yet, he didn't have the balls to come to me and say, Hey, I'm not interested. Hey. I'm going to let you down easy. This was never more than just fun for me. Like, you know. Or even, I don't have time for you. That, Some kind of I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. I can take it. But he did not, he wasn't straight with me. And frankly... It was cowardly what he did. Because instead of saying, instead of saying up front that he wasn't interested, he fucking failed he led and didn't say it. And then bailed. He led me on with mixed signals and broken fucking empty promises. And. I feel like you know, the most mixed signal was the ESO thing. 
No. The, the most mixed signal was the... The, I'm into you, but I want to take things slow. I'm into you, but I'm not going to be on or talk to you oh, yeah. for things. Oh, and he refused to give me his cell phone number. That was another thing. And my thing was, I didn't want to call him. I don't call, I don't talk on the phone. I don't. Yeah, I mean, not unless like, I have to. Skype but I can't. We can, this is the funny thing. Phoenix and I can talk for hours. Seven, eight Skype. hours at a stretch on Skype. No fucking problem. But talking on a phone, man. Talking on a phone is hard for me. I don't know why. It's because you have I... to hold your fucking phone up to your face and shit, or you have to, like, click your neck over like this, like, eh. But it gives me a weird anxiety. This I don't, I just bad, don't like it. This is a bad lighting situation here. But, like, I didn't want to call him on the phone. Well, I would have. Maybe. Just, just to hear his voice. Yeah, which is it's but, acceptable when they're possible you know, boyfriend. That that's something couples do, you know. I probably would have put him on speaker. Couples. I probably would have put him on speaker so that I could hear him without having to hold the phone up. And um, another but, reason for the um, whole wanting his phone number was so that you could actually communicate with him because Skype was being so fucking like psychotic. Well, that and his schedule seemed so chaotic. Exactly. There's that too. That my thing was, I just want to send him a message. A text, text message like, and say, hey, good morning, or I hope you sleep well, or cute, I hope you're safe out there. Cute romantic shit. You know. Or cute friendly shit, honestly. Because. Hey, somebody out here cares about you. Because my whole thing is, all people want in the world is to know they're not alone, and to know that someone cares. No matter what anyone says. No matter what anybody, no matter what anyone says, you can be the most antisocial person ever, but it's deep down, nice gives a, gives a you still want to know somebody cares. And I loved him. And what's sick and fucking twisted is that, in a way, I still get those feelings when I think and talk about it. Because and it's fucked up, and it's sick, and I hate it. Because technically, you didn't get closure. No, I didn't. And it's fucking ridiculous. And this is not the first time this has happened to me in my life. And I'm not going to get into that story, but... That's not a story to be told. N in, well... In this. In... Not in this, no. And, um... And this, this, this here. The pain that my best friend has been put through. The fucking emotional roller coaster that my best friend has put, been put through. This is one reason I am so fucking irate. Right now, I am extremely tired because I have hit the point where my anger, my rage, my hate for this motherfucker has turned into exhaustion. And being done. And the only thing that we can say to any viewers who are experiencing something like this, is if that... If there's red flags, pay attention. Well, if there's Get red out. flags, if there's red flags and you miss them, it's okay. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It happens. That, you're not the only one. The and frankly, one. I learned some and things. And you won't be the last one. No. And I learned some things for this. I learned what that kind of attachment and emotion feels like. I learned... Now you know I, I learned things, and as long as you learn something <sighs> from anything like this, anything bad that happens, as long as you learn something for, from it, it's worth it yeah. in the end. No matter how bad it is, you'll be okay. Also, as I know, Phoenix, have you noticed I get paler the ti more tired I get? <laughs> yes, I did notice that. I thought that was just me. Like, I thought I was just imagining it, but no. And I think that the worst part for me is that I'll never know why. Because I know that I didn't do anything wrong. Because I was careful. I helped you be careful. Like, it was I, so funny, guys. It was so sweet. There was, like, multiple occasions where I would get, when I would get on Skype, 
there would be huge walls of text of him worrying, of him asking for advice, and I'm like, okay, ladies, uh, let's get information, because, like, I'm the, I'm the one people's coming to for the fucking advice. And, and, you know... And it's all joking aside, and all fuckery aside, and all weird little voices, and little poses, and Satan's to it aside, it is unacceptable to do this to somebody. It is. It is it's cruel. It is cruel. It is unfucking necessary. It, I can't even say it's unusual because it fucking happens so much. And it is not okay. And to the people who have had this done to them, it's not your fault. No, it's not. Even if you did everything right, there is something there wrong are, with that person, not there you. There are people that it will never be enough for. There are people that's entire goal in life is to hurt another person by leading them on, by doing this kind of shit, by making them think that you are wanted by them, by the object of your desire, or person of your desire, whatever. And the thing that you have to remember is eventually they'll be the lonely one, alone, and, it, it and seems afraid. And cliche, it seems stupid, and it seems like it's not worth it. But it does get better. It does. It does. It never is goes. There's somebody uh, out there. It will go away eventually. It hasn't gone away from me yet. Because it's so raw. But it's because it's raw. And it's only and just come to a final fucking end. Like within the last 24 hours. Yeah. And you know what? I have people that I can lean on. I have Glitchy. Cool. I have my family. And we have, that's we have thing. Kenny. Yeah, we have Which, Kenny. Speaking of, we didn't explain the whole Kenny the Kill Bear thing. When he found out about this, he was about ready to kill Eric. Didn't and so Eric. he's not actually gonna kill Eric. He was not yeah, not actually. But it guy. was it, it really pissed him off because he does Kenny is one of those people that is is like he will be there for you if he can be there for you even if he can't he'll protect. try. He's fiercely protected. I'm fiercely protected. And I literally just want to go to up to Eric right fucking now and scoop his eyeballs out with my motherfucking nails. Well, and when Kenny messaged me about it, his response made me think of a murderous teddy bear. Yeah. And then Glitchy and I kind of ran with it and we were talking about it and we came up with Kenny the Kill Bear. Yeah, I said, I was like, oh, he's a little Kill Bear. And he, he's, it's because he's sweet. He is. And in nice, and yet utterly murderous <laughs> sometimes. With and a reason, like in a, in a good way too. Like it's like it's like you know those little yappy ass chihuahuas or snake mm. biter dogs that get really fucking pissed off for no fucking reason. He's not like that. He no. had a legitimate reason. His a good friend of his, my best friend, not yours, Kenny, not yours. Just saying, I like I'm okay with you, Kenny, but you're not his bestie. I am. Fuck off. Ah! I had a moment. Sorry. Not sorry. Kenny is mine. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kenny's a good guy. Like an actual proper good yeah. guy. He's a weird little spazzy twink thing. But he's, and he, he's cool. And he's, he's gone through some shit. But he's gone through some shit. And he's still going through some shit that he doesn't deserve. But he's our kind of people, and it just helps to know that there are people who care yeah. that this is happening. You know, and we don't... I did a... Oh, go ahead. I did... No, sorry. No, sorry. I did a whole bunch of passive-aggressive fucking sub-tweeting Ooh, on we Twitter did today sub-tweet today! About this, but... I decided that I'm not gonna be sad about this anymore. You shouldn't be sad! You should be fucking... Because I didn't do anything wrong. You did. And I didn't lose anything on this. If anything, he, he lost out. If anything, he lost out because I've been over backwards for that relationship. Or whatever the fuck it was. And frankly, I deserve better than to be treated that way. Understatement. And... He deserves whatever the fuck he gets. 
which could no, be anything. No, deserves bad things. Well, that's what I mean. I, I know, I, but when people say that, it's like I, my brain always immediately goes to, so he deserves good things? Well, karma will bite him in the ass eventually. Um, because I do good things for people because I want to. I help people because I want to. Yeah, because you don't have to. I don't have to, but I do it anyway because it's the right thing to do. Whereas it seems like Eric gets his rocks off by leading people on, stringing them along, and playing with them. So Karma will come back and bite him in the ass. And one day, I'll find somebody better than he ever was. And a whole hell of a lot hotter. Yo, Colton Haynes just saying he's single. And he's down to mingle with you. And I know... Green Arrow, dude. I done forgot his motherfucking name. He's not heard. Steven... ML. 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 But... And I know... uh, Patrick Stewart. So, Liam Neeson. So, he's ready to sit and spin on these eggs. I... I know that I'm taking the Taylor Swift playbook here by airing this all out on social media and YouTube, but I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for fame. And frankly, I respect Taylor Swift for the things. She does her, and I'm just trying to do me. That's Now, in, in regards to this Taylor Swift thing real quick, I don't give a fuck about Taylor Swift. Like, she has some good music, and I'm not gonna lie, I loved Bad Blood, like, because there were so many fucking badass women in that. It was amazing. Do I think that she should be persecuted the way she is? For she she gets hate for no reason. She, she literally only gets hated on as much as she does because it's popular to hate her. Yeah, it's and trendy. It, when yeah. did somebody, when, when did hating someone become trendy? Okay, like, I know that Rain this beard. purpose, I know the purpose of this whole fucking YouTube video is that Eric is a fucking asshole, but, but I'm not asking. But this is a legitimate thing. And I'm not asking you that guys to That was done it. to Phoenix, that was done to me by association, slash actually I was a part of this because Eric made me a part of this. And, you know, if, I'm if, not asking, to be perfect, I'm not honest, asking Phoenix, you guys. If you had told me to like step back and not be a part of the fucking issue, I would grumble on the sideline and be like, bitch, I don't want to see what's going on. But well, at the same time, I would respect that. I'm not asking for anybody to hate on him or to go track him down and Yeah, we're not pulling a Kardashian, him. you know. I'm not asking for any of that. I just want people to understand what happened. And I want them to hear the whole story so that if you hear something from anybody about it, that you know what actually happened. Yeah. And like I said earlier today, or, well, yesterday now, the video I made was very angry. It was very fucking, I'm going to protect and defend my best friend till the end of time. And yes, I was belligerent. Yes, I was very foul-mouthed, and I did wish a lot of physical fucking harm upon Eric. But I stand by that. I stand by the fact that I think that he deserves any horrible thing that happens to him. Because it is unfucking acceptable to lead a person on and make them think that you give a, give a fuck about them and then just shit on it. And if I had asked Glitchy Mount to make something like that, I wouldn't would. have. I but, asked permission. Let me just state. But I, I asked felt my like best permission. I felt like she was just as entitled to her opinions and her feelings as I was and am. And I felt like whatever happens from this, bring it on. I, I'm not gonna hide my feelings or my thoughts about this. I'm not. This was not something that was okay, and I'm not going to be victim blamed for it or shamed for it. I'm not a victim either. I'm just somebody it happened to. And I want people to know that if this happens to you, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. I will 
be okay. There are bigger, better titties and cocks out there for everybody. I'll move I on. I'm starting to get delirious, I think. I think it's probably time to cut this off. I don't know how long it is. 60 minutes? Jesus, fuck. Okay. Well, that's all for that. I'm um, turning into Casper. We'll be posting both of these together. Tomorrow. Or later Tomorrow. in the day. Or later in the day. Because right and, now, um, I need to go to bed asleep. If you guys have any questions about it, you can message, private message me. Do not message me on Open Twitter. Private message me on Twitter. Or you can easily, um, comment on the video. Yeah, comment on the we'll video. We'll leave the comments open. If you're an asshole in the comments, I will respond with whatever the fuck I want. Just saying. Um, but yeah. Let me preface by pre-commenting to any assholes out there. Your mother should have fucking swallowed. But... Thank you that guys. is literally one of my most favorite fucking insults. I, I swear to God. I know, me too. Calling somebody a dick pig, saying their mother should have swallowed, and saying the toilet. These, these are my favorite things. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and our next video will hopefully will, be a lot more cheerful. It'll be a more cheerful video, I promise. Um, I unless we make a video about the Taylor Swift. Kardashian shit. We really won't make a video about that together. I made some videos on my channel. We can make it. a video about it, but it'd be a bit I kind of want to make a video about Kat Von D and Jeffree Star. We could do that. Because there are um, some issues and not. But frankly, oh, that's all for us today. Yeah. I'm and actually feeling tired, so I'm going to go Thank you for it. watching. Hopefully, there, we oh. helped you in some way, shape, or form. What? And, and there will be a video on my new art stuff coming up soon. Yes. Um, so, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, uh, click the subscribe, give this a thumbs up, or a thumbs cut down. Damn. Feedback either way, please. Like and share. Subscribe, goddammit. Oh my god! Yes! Subscribe, goddammit! I fucking haven't done that. We haven't done that in forever. But yeah, um... We'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah. Bye!